The 70s had some pretty iconic commercials. There was the I want to buy the world a Coke song, which basically was a song claiming that drinking Coke would bring about world peace. Yeah, right. Maybe if everyone drank Mountain Dew, but not Coke. Coca-Cola also had the Hey Kid Catch commercial. It's the one where this kid somehow gains access to the player's tunnel of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he offers Mean Joe Green, legendary defensive lineman, a Coke, and in return, Green gives him his game jersey. Now, that's not a bad deal. A Coke that sold for about 10 cents in those days for a game jersey that he probably could have sold for $1,000. I guess Mean Joe Green wasn't so mean after all. There was the Don't Squeeze the Charmin commercial, which makes no sense to me. What's wrong with squeezing toilet paper? Not sure why you do it, but I don't see the crime in it. And then there was the commercial that tried to trick us kids into healthier cereal. If you're old enough, you'll remember the He Likes It, Hey Mikey commercial. Older brother makes younger brother try the cereal, even though the little kid is notorious for being a picky eater. Big shock, he likes it. It didn't trick us kids though. We were sticking to our tricks and Fruit Loops. They tried a similar strategy with the catchy My Baloney Has a First Name jingle with a cute little kid singing it. Nice try, it's still baloney, yuck. And then there was the American Tourister commercial. The luggage was thrown into a cage with a massive gorilla and the whole commercial was the gorilla beating the daylights out of the luggage. And lo and behold, the luggage is somehow still in perfect condition. The point being that nothing could destroy their luggage. You know, I can still remember those commercials, but at some point they will fade away and at some point won't be remembered anymore. But the same can't be said of the Word of God. It has and always will last the test of time. Peter ends this section in 1 Peter 1 with encouraging words about the Word of God. Let's look at verse 24 and 25 of chapter 1. For all the flesh is like grass, and all the glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. The Bible has literally stood the test of time, and it's worthy to be trusted. It's the most read book in the world. Up to 100 million copies are sold or donated annually. It was written over the course of 1,500 years, written by 40 different authors from different walks of life on three different continents, and yet there's consistency in the Bible. It is inspired by God and it's inerrant, without error. There has never been an archaeological discovery that has contradicted the Bible. It passes the bibliographical test, which looks at the amount of copies found and the time span between the original writings and when manuscripts were discovered. It passes the test of historical accuracy far and, far and beyond other ancient writings. All that to say, the Word of God is special. The Word of God is the very words of God. So my question is, are we treating it with honor? Are we pouring ourselves into reading it, meditating on it, memorizing it, and of course, are we living it out? Are we applying it to our lives? We are to honor the Word of God. One of the best ways of honoring the Word of God is spending time in the Word of God and then doing what the Word of God says through the power of the Holy Spirit. So how about it this week? Let us honor the Word of God that will never fade. Father God, thank you so much. You've given us your word. We don't have to wonder how we should live. You tell us in your word. And it's living and it's breathing. And the Holy Spirit uses the word of God to impact our lives and to change us and to transform us more into the image of Christ. And so we thank you, Heavenly Father, for your holy and precious word. May we honor it this week. May we be in it this week. May we live it this week. In Jesus' name, for your glory, God, we pray. Amen.